In this video, I looked at exporting this HDRI image by Horo, which is in an angular mapped format, as a spherical mapped HDR, and also using Bryce's built in tone mapper to tone map it to prepare it for use in Octane. That was the example given. In a similar vein, I'm going to use um, objects from this product and materials from this product, which also uh, comes with the HDRI I've just shown you, to demonstrate how you can export the objects and the materials effectively into, well, once again I'm going to use Octane, but as I understand it, uh, similar theories might apply for other render engines. The key reason for using uh, this product as an example rather than any other, other than a bit of advertising obviously, but the key reason is that I know all of the objects in this come with a UV map. Unlike Bryce, Octane can't really process models and apply textures to them, image textures, without a UV map. Bryce has got some intelligent mapping modes that allows you to get around this problem, but Octane doesn't. And as I understand it, DS also lacks the full range of uh, mapping, mapping modes that Bryce has that lets you get around this little problem. So if we wanted to export this object with the material on it, you could just go File and Export Object, and it would sort of export with some exported textures as well but Bryce's exporter doesn't really do that good a job and it's better to take control of it yourself uh, one of the reasons is it, it'll try and interpret the scaling so you lose resolution on the images and it will only export them at 512 by 512 and I know that the images on this are 1024 by 1024 and they will go seamlessly around the object if you set things up right so we'll go and export the image components first. To do that, I'm going to go into the material lab and you can see how the material is set up and then go into the texture source editor and I'm going to copy the diffuse component first. So if I copy that and then open up PaintShop Pro, I suppose any graphics application would do for this as long as you can copy and paste and then save. So I've got my 1024 by 1024 repeating texture there. I'll go File, Save Copy As, and I'll call this one uh, Green. OK, and then go back into Bryce and Copy. This is the displacement. That's going to drive Bump. So check out of that. Once I've copied it, go into here and paste a new image. File, Save Copy As, and call this Green underscore Displacement. So I've got those two bits out now. If I go back into the material, what I want to do at this stage is reset to default grey. By doing that, that will then prevent the exporter from trying to export any of the texture, which is what we're aiming for because we've already exported our textures manually. So now the model's in the default grey. We can just go File and Export Object. I'm going to select Wavefront OBJ Format because that's what Octane likes and then just save that. The next stage then in Octane is to import the object. So I'll bring in my object. There you go. And then I'll plug it into my geometry group so we can have a look at it. And then I'm going to apply a material. So I'm going to add node material and make it glossy and plug that in. And then I'm going to bring in my images. So it's add node textures images image and bring in my diffuse and plug that into the diffuse there and then go add node textures images image and bring in my displacement and then plug that into wherever the bump is I think it's there so plug that into the bump there now I want to scale this up because it's looking a bit crude and it was already scaled up on the original model in Bryce so to achieve that effect what I'm going to do is just copy the scale from one of my image textures and then plug that into both the scale values and then I can make sure that the scale scales equally for the diffuse channel and the bump channel. Now I've made it bumpy, I don't have to rely on the roughness value to provide uh, the specular scattering, so that I'll just make it down to about zero or have a very, very low level value there. And then I'm going to increase the index to make it look more like a metal. And because I've supplied the spherical mapped HDRI backdrop that I converted in the last video, then we'll get nice specular highlights on there. It'll look a bit noisy at first, but over time the noise will disappear. And this all works nicely because this model came with a UV map. Uh, if, for example, you have models, and in Bryce, suppose this model didn't have a UV map and you wanted to apply one of these materials, so let's just pop one of these materials on, find the funky materials, there we go. 
pop that same one on there. Right, if it didn't have a UV map in Bryce, what would happen is this top left hand pixel, whatever colour it was, would be spread over the entire object and parametric mapping wouldn't work. But to get around that, we could use Object Cubic because Bryce has these nice additional mapping modes like reflection map and uh, spherical mapping that all are capable of working independent of whether or not the object has a UV map. Unfortunately, now I'll just uh, set that going, you can see how it's going to work anyway, and it probably won't look that too, too much different because of the way that the textures have been set up. But in Octane you would uh, lose all the bumpy surface detail and it would all be a uniform colour um, for the same reason as you have in Bryce. So, I suppose that's the end of the video. Uh, I'll just let this uh, cook a little while longer so we get rid of the noise and then I'll pop this image in as in the starting in the starting frame so you can see what it looked like when it was properly rendered out. Um, I hope you found that interesting and uh, I hope it demonstrates that you don't have to consider that Bryce is just an end in itself that you're going to just render in Bryce that you've also got the options of using things that you've uh, either created in Bryce providing you can convert them into objects um, and textures you've prepared uh, likewise can be exported and used in other render engines you don't have to consider that it's an end in itself Bryce has a lot of interesting features that allows you to use it as a stage in your rendering process so uh, I'll probably come back to this topic in, in other videos as well because there's, there's quite a lot of scope for doing things with Bryce and then linking it up with other software. Okay then, that's the end of the video.